What is going on PC gamers? Welcome to the top 5 best CPUs for your gaming PC for the month of December 2014. Now CPU prices don't change too often so this list is probably going to be good to look at even in uh, mid-2015, early 2015, you get the idea. Uh, CPUs aren't like GPUs where they constantly change prices and things like that. So this is a kind of list where I'm only going to make it once every now and again or once a lot of the prices change and things like that. So let's get right into this countdown. For number 5, I went with the Intel Pentium G3258 Dual Core CPU, 3.2 GHz, $70 for this CPU. Now, this is a dual core CPU, yes. A lot of the later titles like Far Cry 4 and Dragon Age Inquisition are like not even runnable on dual core CPUs. So you got to keep your expectations in line with this CPU. It's only $70. I've seen it as low as $60 before, but... Again, you got to keep your expectations in line. You're, gonna, you're not going to be maxing out every game. You're not going to be doing high-level video editing with this CPU. That's not what this CPU is about. It's for a very entry-level build. For games like League of Legends, maybe some of the older Call of Duty games, even Advanced Warfare, if you have a decent GPU. Um, but yeah, lower key titles. Don't expect to play games like you know Crisis 3, Far Cry 4, Dragon Age Inquisition, things like that. This is a very low key CPU that's perfect for like $350 builds and it works really well in builds like that. But other than that, it's really just a very entry level PC that it's good to get your feet wet if that's your kind of thing. Or you're a lower key gamer and you just play League of Legends, World of Warcraft, RuneScape, shit like that. This CPU is definitely going to get the job done, but don't expect to do high level video editing, live streaming or anything like that on this CPU. Number 4, AMD FX 6300 3.5 GHz 6 core processor, $85, a very solid deal for a very good 6 core CPU. CPU. Now, this is pretty good in video editing and gaming as well. You can even do some live streaming on this CPU. This is a really good all-around CPU for $85. I mean, you're going to be able to do solid gaming. Video editing is going to be even better since you do have the full six cores to utilize. And same thing with live streaming. You can use four cores to play a game and two cores to live stream, things like that. So this CPU is really good if you're an entry-level person that's looking to game, but also do some light video editing, rendering, live streaming, things like that on the side. This CPU is going to work really Really well for that. And for $85, I just thought this was a really solid entry-level CPU. I mean, it's only $15 more than the Pentium, and you're getting a lot more features out of it. You're going to be able to do solid video editing, solid rendering, solid gaming even. I mean, you're going to be able to run titles like Far Cry 4 and Dragon Age Inquisition on this CPU if you have a decent GPU to boot with it, and you're going to be able to do live streaming. A lot of multi-threaded applications are going to work well with this CPU, which is very surprising for the price that you're getting it for at $85. Number three is following the same pattern of, of the FX6300. I went with the AMD FX8350 4.0 GHz 8 core CPU. $140. This follows the same pattern as the 6300, but obviously it's 8 cores. It's going to perform a lot better in video editing, a lot better in live streaming, rendering, multi-threaded applications, things like that. Gaming performance, you're not going to see too much of a bump in performance from the 6300 to the 8350, mainly because a lot of titles don't use uh, 6 core technology as of this moment. Some games do, some of the newer titles are definitely utilizing it, so it's something where a lot of uh, developers are slowly but surely integrating you know, 6 and 8 core technology into games, uh, especially because the next generation consoles, being the PS4 and the Xbox One, actually have 8-core CPUs, so it's going to be a thing where slowly but surely developers are going to start integrating it into games, but right now it's really something you see scarcely, but in the future it's definitely going to be something uh, developers are going to take advantage of, but like I said, the 6-core and the 8-core are going to perform relatively similar uh, in gaming. 8-core is obviously going to perform a, a little bit better, has a higher stock clock, it does have 8-cores, things like that. But in video editing, rendering, live streaming, the 8 core is definitely going to perform better at recording while you're playing games, things like that. Multi-threaded applications, all that kind of stuff, the 8 core is a lot better at. And for $140, you're getting a really solid gaming CPU, but also a very good CPU for editing, rendering, live streaming, all that kind of stuff. Number two, I went with the Intel Core i5-4690K 3.5 GHz quad-core CPU. The K obviously signifies that this CPU is overclockable and if you're getting the i5-4690K, you definitely want to pick up a decent CPU cooler, like a Hyper 212 even, which is only a $25 CPU cooler, so you can do some light overclocking, get it up to 3.8 or even 4 gigahertz. That's going to make this CPU perform a lot better and not for a lot much extra money. I mean, the Hyper 212 is only like $25, so uh, this is a very good CPU for gaming, especially gaming performance in this CPU is absolutely stellar. Uh, most recent titles, Far Cry 4, Dragon Age, Call of Duty, Battlefield, 
run really well if you have a decent uh, GPU to boot, but this is the kind of CPU you're going to get if you're primarily gaming, if you want the best gaming performance. It can also do video editing, rendering, live streaming, not as good as the FX8350 actually. Yeah, there's a price difference between the two, but the i5-4690K is a quad core, so the FX8350 tends to have a little bit better performance in multi-threaded applications than the 4690K. Uh, but with that being said, the 4690K still definitely performs really, really well in video editing, live streaming, things like that. Um, just not up to par. But in gaming performance, this thing's an absolute monster, especially if you overclock it. Thing's an absolute beast, and I highly recommend it. Uh, I have a 3570K myself. That was the Ivy Bridge i5, and I overclocked that thing. Performs like a dream, and uh, you're gonna be getting uh, relatively, you know, a little bit better than a 3570K out of this CPU. Just a very, very good CPU. For gaming and you know a little bit of video editing and live streaming and you know recording all those kinds of things on the side but primarily gaming is going to be your focus with this cpu finally number one i went with the intel core i7 4790k this is a 4.0 gigahertz quad core cpu now it is a quad core but it also has hyper threading which basically makes each of the single cores also create a virtual core it's called hyper threading so this makes this cpu the ultimate cpu in gaming and multi-threaded applications yes there are some higher priced cpus that are like 500 600 even a thousand dollars but these are budget CPUs, and $300, that's pretty expensive, but obviously you got a price to pay to get this CPU, but but it's very good if you're the kind of person that does do a lot of gaming, but you also do a lot of video editing. It's kind of like the best of both worlds from the i5 and the FX8350 mixed together, and you get this ultimate CPU for a solid price of $300. Now again, this CPU is not going to perform much better than the i5-4690K in gaming, so if you're the kind of person that just games, you're probably better off getting an i5-4690K, uh, but this uh, CPU is meant for people that want to do some heavy gaming, want to do heavy recording, heavy rendering, things like that, live streaming, a lot of that. Uh, this CPU is perfect. Yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Also, this top five list is just is ordered from lowest price to highest price. They're all different prices. They all target different consumers, but uh, just figure out what your price point is, and you can pick any of these CPUs up. Uh, if your price point allows for it. So thanks for watching this video, guys. Remember to hit that subscribe button, like this video, and comment, and I will talk to you all later. Peace!